Hi, I'm Arlie. I'm a proud member of Al-Anon. My home group is in Granite Falls. Uh, we meet on in an old Grange building out there on 163rd Avenue Northeast in Granite Falls. We meet every Monday night at 7 o'clock. And if you're ever in the neighborhood, it's open meeting. Just swing on in. We'd love to have you. I am the Granite Falls Al-Anon gnome. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm getting, I'm getting ready to, to, you know, to come up here and talk to you folks and stuff and, and share my story a little bit, and I'm, I'm kind of nervous, you know. Um, and so I'm thinking, you know, how am I going to do that? What am I going to do? And I'm like, I come up with this brainstorm, right? Well, Arlie, just use the 12 steps and tell your story. And so that's what I'm going to do tonight. Um, Step one, we admit we're powerless over alcohol and that our lives become unmanageable. You're going to notice that Al Anon has the exact same 12 steps as AA, right? Um, yeah, so how, how's that work for me? Well, you know, it worked pretty easy for me because I was, I was, you know, way ahead of me ever finding a 12 step program. I'd been very involved in my church. Um, I'd lived probably, what, uh, you know, a good 10, 15 years with my wife with, you know, everything going really smooth and nice for the most part. I mean, there was a reason why we were going to church. It's because we were messed up. But nonetheless, everything was going real well, and the, the effects of her alcoholism and stuff were, were nil. I mean, they weren't there. She was taking care of business. I went to work. I'd come home, she'd get the money, she'd pay the bills, things went pretty good. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, I had this pretty good foundational idea of what my higher power was and all that. In fact, I got a little slogan that I've come up with, steps one, two, three, set me free, all the rest is the process. And I had those first three steps pretty well set in my mind and everything. And um, yeah, so it was, it was pretty easy when alcoholism started taking over my world and destroying it, absolutely destroying it. I mean, I, I'm coming home from work, the bills aren't paid, the checking account's in the red, I'm calling up the bank and asking what's going on. And I'm being told by, by my alcoholic not to worry about it. And, and I just know that this isn't sustainable, right? This is nuts. And, and uh, I got my own trash that my own weaknesses, my own liabilities, my step four, right? And, and they're all coming out. They're all coming out in a very serious way. Um, yeah, and so... Yeah, time goes on, she starts drinking more, starts pulling away from everything. Um, we have a son, you know, that uh, is turning 13, and he's going off the rails. He's going, literally going off the rails, has his 13th birthday. Um, yeah, uh, goes to Oktoberfest on Friday night after I'm like, no, nah, I want you to stay home. Please just stay home. You don't necessarily need to be out with your buddies tonight. And uh, doesn't come back. It's the first time he'd ever done anything like that. But he's gone, and he doesn't come back till Monday morning. <laughs> you know, Monday morning, he's, he's off the rails. Uh, so steps one, two, three, set me free, all the rest of the process. Um, yeah, my life's unmanageable. Um, isn't that a nice way of putting that? Unmanageable. <laughs> flipping train wreck. Flipping train wreck. I was losing everything important to me. It was being taken away by this, this wily disease that was, that was showing up in my house, and, and I had not a clue. And I wasn't going to have a clue for a long time. I mean, you know, um, just knowing God doesn't keep you from adverse situations, and it doesn't protect me from the choices that people very dear to me and near to me 
are making. And so there was, there was going to be a long, down, slow, stinking slide. And ultimately, uh, I was, I was going to end up leaving that house, leaving that house. But yeah, unmanageable. <laughs> I, I kind of chuckle. I mean, you know, and, and, and this program does that uh, more than once. I mean, what a nice way of putting it, unmanageable. Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Uh, again, you know, pretty, pretty easy for me. I'd already been there. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, and again, another example of just how, how um, the steps just kind of make it easy for me to accept. Yeah. Restore me to sanity. The reality is, I was nuts. I was nuts. I was trying to control people rather than love them. I was, I was trying to manage the crazy stuff that was going on and keep it from happening. And uh, I was hurt and confused and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. Made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand him. Um, yeah, I'd already kind of done that, right? But the deer in the headlights, I, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what's going on. I can't, I'm, I'm trying desperately to keep the finances together, go to work, keep this kid from running off the rails. And every time, every time I get with my alcoholic and we start talking through issues, the head's shaking, yeah, 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 but when it comes to implementation on how to run the household and how it's, she's not showing up, she's not there. Not only that, but really there's no real cooperation. And, but I'm, I'm explaining everything to her in fine detail. I mean, that's my part of it, right? That's my part of the insanity. I'm, I'm like, you know, no, and here's why. And three hours later, you know, their head's on the table, they're asleep, and I'm still explaining why I just said no to something, you know, as simple as, you know, we aren't, we aren't going to California and Disneyland this year because we don't have the money, you know, and um, trying always, always to, uh, to make sense and thinking that if somehow explaining myself in, in great detail is going to curb the behavior and bring sanity into my world. It's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. Step four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I was blind. I was blind. I've been, I've been you know, this fearless moral inventory I'm really, so I turned my will and my, my life over to the care of God as I understand him. And, and step four is where I really, you know, have to start putting that into practice. Because I'm absolutely blind to my own behavior and, and how untrusting I am. How I've been trying through you know, rage, you know, yelling and screaming, manipulation, emotional manipulation and abuse. Um, I've not been a very good boy. I've not been a very good boy at all. And uh, it was scary thinking about step four, except for one thing. You know, this, this higher power that we talk about, um, is described as a loving higher power. And, and one thing that it, I'd remembered from my childhood, and, and, and I brought that into adulthood and, and this relationship with my higher power, and, and my mother had instilled it in me, and, and that is that he's got an unconditional love for me, and he forgives my shortcomings. And so it made it pretty easy for me in that regards to take a look at you know, my faults. And uh, yeah, and, 
and I had a, my sponsor. God, I love my sponsor. <laughs> I mean, I, I would not want to have to walk down the road that that guy's walked down. But, uh, you know, he, he did a real good job also with me. When, when we were going through my step four, John, my sponsor's name is John, um, he'd say, now, Arlie, you know, how do you turn that into a, you know, this Frank Sansas, Frank, St. Francis of Assisi thing, you know, taking the negative and turning it into a positive. So, all right, so you're untrusting. How do you become more trusting? How you start to trust people? You're, you're a liar. How you start telling the truth? You're critical. How do you start becoming an encouragement to people? You know, and so it wasn't just finding fault, my faults, but it's also finding those faults and turning them into something positive, and along with, you know, all my good traits as well. Um, yeah, I, I had a way of, you know, one, one of my faults was I had this way of, of just getting fixated on everything that was going wrong. My own problems, my own faults, my own shortcomings, but... But not only that, but everything in the flipping world, right? There was just nothing right. Um, in, in all this time, I was also seeing professional counseling as well. <laughs> and that guy, he, he was cool. He, he, did, he did me a good thing. He, he, one day he asked me, he said, Arlie, what's beautiful in your world? What's beautiful in your world? And I'm like, uh... Yeah, there was, <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't come up with anything. And so he challenged me. He said, well, why, why don't you start looking for stuff? And so, you know, we talk about gratitude and changed attitudes in Al-Anon. We do that a lot. And, and really, that is, that, that is a big help for me getting past my shortcomings and stuff. Uh, just a simple attitude of gratitude, finding things in my day that are worth paying attention to. Sunrise, sunset, you know, smile on someone's faces, um, you know, just all kinds of little things. Step five, admit to God and to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Wow. You know, this is a cool step. And, and my sponsor, again, he was really good with this, but, you know, just because he was there and he would listen, right? Um, I, I, th this, you know, and this is a spiritual program. <laughs> I mean, that's hocus pocus, right? Spirituality. I mean, all this spiritual stuff. I mean, hocus pocus. I believe in science, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, so what the way my step five work, you know, is, you know, I've been working through all these things, the step fours and stuff, and so I admit it to God and I admit it to myself and it stuck right between my two ears. <laughs> it's stuck in there. And, and that's where all my stinking thinking is as well, all my faulty thinking. And so as long as, you know, everything I'm admitting is just stuck between my two ears, it really hasn't gone anywhere. And it's not until I actually open up my mouth and it comes out of my mouth to, to another human being and, and they hear it that I'm really getting rid of those things and and it, it's it's a you know that's that's for me it was just a spiritual thing you know and uh, to be able to, to admit some of the things I had done so shameful so shameful I mean um, yeah so and, and, have, and have another human being listen to that and say, I understand, you know, and, and just let me be me and, and not find fault with that and still, still say hi to me and acknowledge me on the street, God. <laughs> and, and that's what my sponsor did for me. Um, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, entirely ready. Um, yeah, that's not a big deal, right? <laughs> I mean, who wants 
their defects of character. Who wants, I don't, I don't, you know, I had, I had a friend at work, he, he, he was having problems with me, and I, and I looked at him, I said, well, you know, what, what exactly is it that, that's wrong? And, and the guy said, you know, it, it, it flummoxed him that I would even ask, you know, and he says, you're just, you're just a victim, Marley. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> a victim. I'm a, I never saw myself that way, but, you know, I took it to heart. And, I, and so, absolutely, absolutely, I'm a victim. I act like a victim. And, uh, and when I do that, I'm, I'm usually pointing a finger at somebody else and telling them what they've done wrong. And that's how I avoid dealing with my own victimhood, right? Um, it's, it's deflection. <laughs> you know, if I could push, push it off on somebody else, change direction, yeah. And so I started dealing with, with just that a little bit. And uh, I, I discovered I was a terrible, terrible victim. I had no power. You know, the problem with my understanding, my, my experience with victimhood is I have no power. Victims are powerless, right? And so, yeah, I'm dealing with my victim thing, and you know what? I, I'm, yeah, I'm ready to get rid of that. I'm ready to get rid of that. It's not, not a problem, and, and I love step seven. Humbly ask him, my higher power, to remove my shortcomings. Yeah, I don't, want, I don't want to be a victim anymore. I don't want to terrorize women and children with my anger and my control. I don't want to be the guy cutting people off in traffic and flipping them off. I am, I am so tired of being angry. And, and I'm finally coming to the realization, you know, I mean, y'all probably know this, but I can't be happy and angry in the same moment. It just does not work that way. And I have wasted so much of my life trying to control other people with my anger, my yelling, my little tantrums. <laughs> Grown man having a hissy fit like a two-year-old in the store, right? Holy cow. Why would I want to remove that? And, and God does this for me, right? This higher power does it for me. It says, humbly ask him to remove my shortcomings. And I tell you, for me, that, that's a serious thing because on every one of my shortcomings is this aberrant behavior of mine. I've found that I don't have the power in and of myself to change my behavior. Not by myself. I need a higher power. I need a power greater than myself to fix this shit, you know? Dang. Made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Um, <laughs> this, was, this was a rough one for me. Um, and, and, and my sponsor was, was Arlie. It's just a list. <laughs> You know, it's just a list because I, you know, we, I, I'd meet up with him and we'd be talking about it and stuff. And he says, so who's, how many names you got? One. <laughs> how come, Arlie? I said, ah. And he said, Arlie, it's just a list. I said, but, 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 but I have to make amends to them all. And he says, No. There's two parts to this one, Arlie. Make a list and then become willing. Pretty simple, Arlie. Don't make more out of it than you have to. Now, next week, let's try and have a list of names. Go back and think about your experiences on your step four and stuff and just write some names down for us, okay? And so, yeah, but, but my, my magical thinking, my... my Stinking thinking, you know, I'm, I'm racing ahead on all this stuff, but I did it. I did it. I managed it, and uh, yeah, and it worked out okay. And some of that stuff, I still haven't found myself willing 
to do, and some I just can't, right? I mean, there, there's stuff in my past that, that I'm not going to be able to make an amends. The best, the best I can do is, is change my behavior. Change my behavior. That's, and, and I've already mentioned that that ain't happening on my own strength. No, no. Um, yeah, and so then nine, make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Um, yeah, and so I mean, you know, oftentimes in Al-Anon, um, a lot of the literature, you know, my name's like first on that list. Um, other people close by, my parents and so forth, um, yeah. And then my alcoholic, which, you know, by this time, I'm not living there with them anymore. I've, I've moved out. And, and really, I, I've moved out. I've been out for a few years. And uh, um, I'm really feeling a lot of bitterness and resentment about the fact that uh, this other, my alcohol is just taking over this other person, and, and there's just, I mean, it's easy for me when I'm discussing and thinking this stuff to just slide in to start, you know, my alcoholic this, my alcoholic that, and, and they this, and they that, and they that, and, and, and I get off myself. Um, and this program, Al-Anon, is about me changing my attitude and taking, staying on my own damn side of the street. I'm, I'm just a mastermind at slipping into other people's. <laughs> In fact, I was, I was thinking the other day, you know, like step four is take a fearless, you know, moral inventory of yourself. I'm like, oh, damn, I've been doing moral inventories my whole life. I'm a pro at this, but they've always been for someone else. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not much on doing my own moral inventory. God. So anyway, um, yeah. Um, made direct amends to such people whenever possible. And so, yeah, I am filled with resentment and I'm upset, and I'm angry. Um, I've, got, I've got some behaviors that I'm, that I'm engaging in that aren't very healthy. And, uh, and I gotta go back and make amends. And, and the primary one was, was to my alcoholic, you know, in the way that I had treated her. Um, and you know, I'd like to say it was really hard and all that. It really wasn't. But it felt kind of fruitless, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I worked this program, and, and I tried to, to take it seriously. And uh, because I want to be better. I want to be a better person. I want to be not only that, this program, I, after a few years, I've discovered just how much it is given to me. And I, I mean, by the time I'm doing this stuff, I'm just starting to get into it. But this program, I mean, I didn't know who the hell I really was. I mean, working this step four and, and going through this process, it, it's not magic, but I woke up one day and I'm like, damn. You know, I really handled that negative situation pretty damn good. I didn't get upset. I actually, I actually talked with my alcoholic and worked through an issue that we came to no agreement on, and I wasn't pissed and upset for two or three weeks about it. <laughs> you know, maybe two or three weeks, a little bit of a stretch for me, but um, yeah. No, it, it works. So I made, I made direct amends to her and stuff and, and a few other people where I could. And, and then there were some that uh, obviously I just, I had to change my behavior. Continued to take personal inventory. And when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. God, I love this. Spot inventories, right? Spot inventories. The, the thing I love about spot inventories is that I don't have to go back and do all the, you know, start at step four again and all that shit, you know? And, and the damage 
doesn't get done. The damage doesn't get done nearly as much. So, so the way that looks for me, and, and really it kind of was played out with my buddy at work, you know, Harley, you're just a victim. Well, what's really bothering you? You're just an asshole. I know, but what exactly is it that I've done to you that makes you feel that way about me? And that whole conversation, you know, I, 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 can, I can have, usually, without getting all upset, without raising my voice, maintaining some serenity, right? Yeah, um, that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing for me. That's new turf. That's a new way of living. That's a new way of living for me. Um, step 11, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with, with God as we understood him, praying only for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Ah, uh, yeah, this, you know, um, th this is, I, I've got written down here, serenity prayer, serenity prayer. Um, and, and that's exactly what I think about when, when I'm looking for what God's will for me is in a specific situation, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And when I, when I read that, first thing that works in my brain is if, if I can't change it, it's not my business, it's God's. It's my loving higher power's business. You know, and so I, I need to let go of that, whatever the hell it is. And the sooner I let go of it, the sooner I can, well, and, you know, my, my, John, John, Harley, you have no control over other people, places, and things. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, I absolutely agree with people. Absolutely. I have no control over other people. And, and uh, so they clearly... When, when I come into a conflict with someone else, it's, it's, it's God territory. It's God territory. I don't need to explain my nose. I don't need to explain my behavior. I need to stop doing all that shit because all that shit was really me trying to convince my alcoholic that, that their behavior was aberrant and unacceptable. And all they ever came away with feeling is that I didn't like them. You know, no kidding. That was helpful. Fuck. You know, no, no, you know, I, I, I don't, if there's one thing I've found in this program, and one thing I'm absolutely confident of, is that, that my alcoholics especially, but everybody around me, needs my acceptance, not my judgment not my correction, not my clear understanding of what this circumstance actually is and how we should respond to it, no. Um, so the serenity prayer, you know, God grant me the serenity to accept that I'm not, I'm not here to change other people, I'm here to accept them. Um, yeah, and I need the courage to change things that I can. Oh, well, that's, that's me. That's me. That's my part. That's my part in it. And, and yeah, so in, in, in all this, you know, I don't know how everybody else relates to their higher power and stuff, but, man, I am constantly in dialogue. All my stinking thinking, all my, all my uh, uh, compulsive behaviors, all my compulsive thinking that's just automatic and out of control, um, has really, in, in a large part, turned into prayer. I mean, I, I hardly go through a moment in a day where I'm not asking my higher power what's going on and checking in with him. It really is spiritual. I can't really explain it. And it's not like, I mean, it's just conversation. It's just conversation. It's just welcoming him into my thinking. And, and my, again, my, you know, sponsors. I don't know how many sponsors are out here tonight, but God bless you. Because my sponsor, I can't tell you how important. I mean, he just, he listens to me for the most part, but he's 
been so impactful for me. And, and, and so, you know, he, he, and he's showing me what's been working for him. And so he says, Arlie, what are the four absolutes? You know, and in that serenity prayer and the four absolutes, you know, is it honest? Is it pure? Is it loving? You know, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm running out of time. I'm not doing bad. I'm doing good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, anyway, the, all that stuff has just been really powerful for me. And, and being able to um, help me, help me stay on my own side of the road and work my own program, right? And, and in that, has come a whole new way of life. You know, and so um, the, the next one, step 12, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we, we, take, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all of our affairs. And, and I'm like, you know, yeah, here it is. Sesh. So in Al-Anon, we talk, Sesh, you know, sharing our experience, strength, and hope. And, and, and that's what I hope I'm doing up here tonight is sharing my experience, strength, and hope. And so my experience is, and, you know, this is, I, you know, I could have done all this in like five seconds. <laughs> my experience is, is that I am really messed up and out of control and I'm affecting everybody else in my life as well, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, that's my experience. My strength is really that, that I've discovered a power greater than myself that loves me and gives a shit enough about me to help me have a better life. And my hope is that I can carry this and maintain this right up to the very end, right up to the very end. You know, there was a time, there was a time in, in um, shortly after I left, I left the house of alcoholism, right? I, I left my wife and my son. I felt like shit. I mean, I left this 14-year-old kid at that point in time to live with an alcoholic. Um, I, I asked the kid, I said, come, come with me, you know, this there's just conflict and arguing and poor choices going on all the time. Don't come with me. And he wouldn't do it. Um, and so I left. I left. God, I felt like I abandoned that kid. God, I felt like I abandoned that kid. I did. But I also felt like, you know, if I hadn't left when I did, I don't, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know what it would have been like. I know that, that after about a year of being out of that home and, and the constant conflict and the constant struggles to, to make life work, to make life work, I mean, God, how, how could it be so screwed up? I had a good job. I was making more, we were making more money than we had ever seen. We were hitting midlife. The kids were all growing up. I mean, we had our best years ahead of us, and, and this disease comes in and just takes over, and the person I love and the person I married is gone. Now, I, I'm, I'm happy to say, and, and so, Sesh, you know, Strength and hope, sharing our experience, strength and hope. I mean, I, I went to visit that woman after not seeing her specifically for about 10 years, just this, this past December, just before Christmas. And God, she was cleaned up in her own right mind. <laughs> you know, I... I don't know how God does this stuff. I was just happy to see it. I was just happy to see it. It, it happens. Recovery is a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. You know, people sometimes ask me, you know, what, what uh, how, you know, this, this whole uh, 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 attraction rather than promotion. How's that work and everything? I tell you, 
how attraction works. It's called recovery. Shit. You know, when I see recovery on people's faces, when I see people in recovery, I am attracted to that. I am attracted to that. When people come into our meetings and they're healthy and safe and they see people's lives being changed, they're attracted. You can't not be attractive at that point. Now, and there's all kinds of other issues that determine as to whether somebody's going to keep coming back or not, but that's all on them. Um, yeah. You know, the other thing that comes into my mind as, as I'm talking about this step 12 and stuff was uh, I, I love the slogan, one of my favorite slogans, progress, not perfection. <laughs> progress, not perfection. Um, yeah, um, that's my motto. That's my motto. If I, if I start this day out and uh, I make some progress, that's way better than being perfect and, and not starting the day. Um, I hope some of you have gotten something from all this and, and that, you know, it's been helpful for you. And yeah, I'm, I think I'm done. <laughs>